A controller that needs no introduction, whether you get this flavor or you get this variant. Gamesters 40 and $45 wired Xbox controllers have a little trick up their sleeve. The Mad Hatter can overclock itself to 1000 hertz on Xbox consoles and PC to get the lowest input lag or delay possible. In best case scenarios, under one millisecond. But as the controller El Capitan, I'm seeing a lot of misinformation floating around the pro controller world, Reddit forums and whatnot about this little controller, its capabilities, limitations, and how to actually uh, get it working with the old overclock. Does it work on console? How do you get it working on PC? Does it make a difference 250 to 1000? Just raw gamer feel. Those and many questions will be answered in this video. Let's get it. Welcome aboard, Stallion or Stallionette. Over 200 gamepads tested, not letting off the throttle. Controller looking like a model. Reviews go down smooth, pass me the bottle. I got paddles, back to the lobby with a waddle. Gaming news, gear reviews, more controllers than you can use. A man of many faces, recording by the smoke and aces. I wasn't born the controller, Captain. It was you bucking Broncos that made it happen. Enough input delay, this video is slapping. Step one, as with any consumer electronic devices or goodies, you definitely want to do that initial patch or update. I've done many an update on this gamepad because I've owned it since prior to public release, but this update is available and we're going to do it right now. It'll show you your current firmware version and what you're updating to. Then you get a progress bar, which actually does move quite quickly. I really do like this application. You can pinch the sides to resize and zoom. You can even full screen and you can control it with keyboard and mouse or the controller, which is how all controller applications should work. Then you may or may not get this fun little pop-up for calibration saying make sure the sticks and triggers are not touched it next please rotate both the sticks around the edge three times a little typo right here time sand it should be a space in there times and gently press the trigger down to the bottom three times. So I'm gonna depress the triggers. I'm not depressed, but I'm going to depress the triggers. A one, two, three, a one, a two, and a tree. And then on these thumbsticks, I'm gonna rotate these bad boys, twist that ass in a circle three times. Flip the buns in a twist, so to speak. Popular club move. Much like me in the second quarter of my life, success is what you're gonna see there. Pit finish. What we're doing with this application here today is trying to find out if you can overclock to a thousand hertz within the manufacturer's software, the GameSir Nexus application, not to be confused with the YouTube channel, Gamers Nexus, the one that called out Linus Tech Tips uh, a few months back. They're known for other stuff too, but that's always what I think of, Gamers Nexus. I don't know if that's what they wanted their reputation to be, but now they're known as the guys that called out Linus. I could get sidetracked on this topic, but I'm not going to. I'm going to move. We're going to go over here to profiles, and you are going to see a reported polling rate, 250 hertz, which is going to get you around four milliseconds of input lag or delay, whether you're on PC or the console side of the house. Let's click it. A couple things I don't like. First of all, this isn't a drop down where you can select the different speeds 125 250 500 thousand hertz you just click it and it swaps between three speeds 250 500 thousand hertz now in 500 or a thousand which are technically overclocks from this software you are going to get a warning that this is an experimental or beta feature and your headphone jack you're going to jack yourself off if you like to go wired because that is going to be disabled almost everyone's doing the dongle with the wireless headset thing i'm not going to get into why that is here yeah why wireless for sure <laughs> one of the cool things about this program is you can configure three separate profiles and you can name them here. So if you want Grandpappy Winston, Tomahawk Knuckle Duster 3000, and I don't want to be here today, but I'm on the clock, you can program them here. You do not need to click save anywhere to apply these. They just happen in real time. But why we're here today, why you're hanging out with me is when you click on this question mark circle, it is going to give you a little bit more information. Hey buddy, you're about to overclock your controller. If you find that this setting is not taking effect, meaning how, how would you know if an overclock takes effect or not? Well, you're a Gamer Heaven subscriber and I've done tutorials on how to not only overclock, but also, most importantly, measure the polling rate. It's like bolting new parts on a performance car, a sports car, and then being like, mm, well, I assume it pulls a little bit harder, corners with a little bit more grip and brakes a little bit shorter, but you don't know without testing it, without strapping it to the dyno jet and doing a little pull. And it's the same thing when we run a program like X Input Test or Gamepad LA is, is a decent secondary program to measure the polling rate to see if we actually overclocked successfully. But this note is telling you that there's an additional step that you can take with an article that is going to be linked in the description below if your overclock is not taking effect directly from the GameSir Nexus application. If you click on download, nothing happens. If you click on back, it just goes back. We are overclocked at 1000 hertz according to GameSir Nexus and we're going to rotate that left analog stick in a circle and you are going to see exactly what you should under one millisecond of input lag or delay on a thousand hertz polling rate and actually a little bit over i love to see that out of the box with the latest update you just click this box run the test and you're at a thousand hertz that overclock might not work 
I've got a step for you that you can take. This extremely helpful article, the URL is going to be linked in the description below. The G7 controller has to be at least 3.26 or higher. So when you plug your controller in, just run the update that's offered and you'll be at the latest version. Now, if you have the SE or special edition, which is going to be the joint without rubber grips, without mechanical clicky face buttons, but with disable toggles for the rear buttons and with Hall Effect thumbstick modules. I personally prefer the OG G7. That controller needs to be on version 6.30 or higher and the GameStar Nexus application needs to be 1.2.9 or higher. Enable the 1000 hertz polling rate, which we've done. Now for us, that worked right out of the box. Important note, you cannot do shit on the default profile because that is going to be your default. I'm running a stock controller profile. The other three, Grand Pampy, Winston, Tomahawk, and whatever you name the last one, are going to give you full customization of things like the thumbstick response curves and of course, overclocking the polling rate. Now to make sure that 1000 hertz overclock is taking effect successfully, it is recommended that you click on the question mark icon to download the script package. So when I was clicking in that circle and it looked like nothing was happening. Supposedly it was installing a script in the background, but there was no evidence that anything was being done on my PC. Furthermore, I have tested the overclock available in the GameStar Nexus application without running this script or code and it worked for me. Might be different from case to case basis, but if it does not, you're going to download from safe website. When you click on it, it is indeed going to be a thousand hertz polling rate script that comes in the form of a zipped folder. I'd recommend stuffing this into your downloads. Then you are going to right click on it from your downloads package and extract all. You are going to see five pieces of content inside the unzipped folder, you are going to right click on enable.bat and run it as an administrator. After receiving the successful operation prompt, go ahead and restart your PC. Keep in mind, you do not need to restart your PC every time to get this program to work. This is just a one-time beast to get that script enabled. I can't think of a reason or use case scenario where you'd want to disable the thousand hertz script. It doesn't do any bad having it run in the background of your PC, but if it does or is, go ahead and right click on disable.bat, run that as an administrator, and you're going to disable it. Restart your PC and it'll be disabled. And this is a freakishly interesting note, one that I don't fully or even slightly comprehend, but it is from the manufacturer, a game, sir, a yes, sir. 500 hertz polling rate can be used on Windows 10 or higher, so 10 or 11, and you do not need to enable the 1000 hertz script. The 1000 hertz overclock, if you want the full speed, can only be engaged on Windows 11, and you should, in essence, need to run this script, although it's just the click of a button in the game, sir, Nexus application. Now, here is where there is a good chunk of confusion. I have successfully downloaded, extracted, and installed it on my PC. I don't know who the old wives are, but the old wives are always telling tales that are incorrect. And one of these old wives tales is that by installing that thousand hertz script, it unlocks all Xbox controllers, which are polling rate locked to allow them to be overclocked to 500 and a thousand hertz where they would usually be capped. That is simply incorrect, but I'm not just going to tell you that it's incorrect. I'm going to show you. You might notice that there's an empty slot on the wall, which I really hate having dead slots where there's not a controller socketed in the old wall, but the stock Xbox Series S controller, yeah, I know it ain't really fully stock. We customized it on the channel for $8, a little spray paint action and whatnot. Uh, this is going to be our candidate for a test run. And keep in mind that Microsoft Xbox controllers, the 360, One, and Series are going to be polling rate locked at the board, the PCB, printed circuit board. By running this script, maybe I can overclock her to 1000 hertz. We are going to run ourselves a thousand hertz sample, meaning the PC is waiting for 1000 inputs from our controller in X input mode. Rotating that left analog stick in a circle, you are going to see, unfortunately, eight milliseconds of input lag or delay on a 125 hertz stock clock. And it's taking me a long time to complete the test. It takes a while from the computer to receive those thousand inputs because it's only getting an eight millisecond refresh rate on a 125 hertz stock clock. That big outlier is what's making this number look a little whoppy jawed. Let's run another one, please. Inconsistent as the day she was born, minimum and maximum far as shit from each other. Jitter, but well, actually jitter isn't that bad, so that's cool. Golly jeepers, is she slow? If you scroll through the numbers manually, you are going to see it as a rock solid or at least consistently eight millisecond of input lag or delay on a 125 hertz stock clock. Yeah, yes, indeedy. 125 hertz polling rate. It's going to give me that. Beautiful. So just to confirm two things, I don't do my hair anymore and the controller is still polling rate locked at the board. All Xbox controllers are polling rate locked at the board, except for the Victrix Gambit. They use a special processing and doodads and dibbly bits. Yeah. There is now an update that allows you to overclock to 500 or a thousand hertz in the GameStar Nexus application for the G7 and G7 
SE controllers. 500 is only available on Windows 10. If you want to go to 1000, you do need to be on Windows 11, and there is a chance you need to install the Xbox script in the background. That script does not allow you to overclock all Xbox controllers. That is just the game cert controllers. As for the console side of the house, it works identically as the PC software application. In fact, the update rolled out together, so that 500 and 1000 hertz mode became available on the Xbox same time as the PC, which is pretty cool, and it works the same way. Also, if you overclock it to 1000 hertz on the PC in the Game Sir Nexus application, like we did in this video, and then jump over to the Xbox, it automatically reflected that it was already at 1000 hertz. I didn't type that in on the Xbox or anything. So I can also tell a difference going from 250 mode to 1000 hertz on the Xbox side of the house. It does feel substantially more snappy and responsive. When you really notice that is not really hitting buttons or squeezing the triggers, but on the thumbsticks, for sure, walking and aiming. I am going to be getting a physical device to measure the input lagger delay, not only on console, but also just right down to the printed circuit board level of a controller. This was highly requested by my viewers, and it's something that I've always been interested in doing. As you've seen, the controller views have evolved over time here at Gamer Heaven from me just casually talking at my desk. Now, there's several segments and several camera angles. The reviews have become longer, and that's not because there's a bunch of fluff and bullshit, but because I've gotten requests to measure the input lag and to try overclocking and to diddle with the thumbsticks in GPT or Gamepad Tester. So it might take time, but I make good on all these promises. So if you've requested a certain segment or thang to be added to the reviews, and I said, I got you, fam. It might take time, but I swear to the little baby Jeebus that I, I do gotcha. This was a somewhat short video explaining the limitations and abilities of the G7 and G7 SE on the Xbox and PC side of the house when it comes to overclocking, because that controller can do more than almost any other controller. And it'll be nice to actually put the proof in the pudding for all of us, bust out my spoon, and be able to measure that input lag or delay with a device on the Xbox. Drop in the comments section below if you have a game sir G7 or SE, and if you're liking that gamepad, and I will see you stallions and stallionettes tomorrow. Peace. If you enjoyed the video, liking it helps it to get seen by more gamers, so this information will reach in a system as well. Much like the back of the TV, I've got plugs for all of my socials down there in the description below. And your wallet will greatly thank you if you check the description because there are exclusive discounts on a ton of products, including controllers, control freaks, keyboards, mouse pads, clothes, and energy drinks. And keep in mind that you, the viewer, keep this channel running. The more stallions and stallionettes trotting around the stable, the better. So molly wop that subscribe button like it owes you money, and we'll have the same amount of fun tomorrow tomorrow.